Welcome to episode 4 of the Service Design Podcast. I'm David Morgan from Night Moves, and together with Stina von Hof and in collaboration with the Service Design Network, we have conversations about service design with practitioners from around the globe. This is the first episode of a series in which we talk to the winners of the Service Design Awards. Today we'll be speaking with Carol Meekin from Brand Manual, who'll be telling us all about reinventing the bookstore for Apollo from Estonia. Hey, Carol, welcome to our show. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm fine. Or, or let's say I'm great. <laughs> okay, hi. <laughs> Why are you uh, great? <laughs> I'm great because every Estonian always says I'm fine, as if, uh, as if they were. So usually this means everything and nothing at the same time. Therefore, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you had me and uh, this makes me feel really great. I'm honored. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> Great. Um, so we're speaking to you, of course, because uh, you were one of the winners of the Service Design Network Award. Um, but before we get into that, uh, I'd like to ask you if you could introduce yourself to our listeners, please. Very good. Thank you. I, my name is Karel Mikin. I'm one of the founding partners of Brand Manual, a service design and branding agency located in Tallinn, Estonia. And we also have an office in Stockholm. And... Uh, I started the office uh, with uh, three other partners uh, at the moment where we all were fed up with uh, doing advertising. We all were employed by different advertising agencies. And instead of doing better communication, we decided to start doing uh, better products and better services. And I think this has worked out pretty well. Okay. And uh, how long ago is it that you made this switch this happened in 2009, so this makes uh, seven and a half, almost eight years now. Okay. And uh, have, have you been using the term service design uh, in your work all that time, or is that something more recent for you? Uh, yes, basically all the time. When we started the company in 2009, we had never heard of service design before, but uh, mm -hmm. for the first time, uh, one month of our new, newly established company, we didn't have any clients yet and did, we didn't even have a clue what we are going to be doing in detail. So after we went into detail, we discovered uh, service design and figured out that this, is, this describes perfectly what we aimed to do. So ever since 2009, we have been using the, the term and trying to both redefine and add more meaning to it as we go. Nice, nice. I think that's something uh, that's probably familiar to several others as well, that often people change the way they're working to uh, a way that feels, makes more sense. Uh, and in the end, it turns out to be called service design. <laughs> I think that's recognizable for myself too. <laughs> exactly. It is common sense in the end, but unfortunately, common sense is pretty uncommon nowadays. <laughs> That's true. <Yes. laughs> well, we're all on a mission to make that more common. <laughs> <laughs> so you already uh, you've been using service design for quite a while. What did you see uh, changing in the, those years? Let's say the first year was really tough. We had trouble finding uh, new clients because this was an economic downfall. Uh, we hit he heavy crisis. I think the whole Europe felt it, 2008, 2009. And uh, a lot of companies went bust. But on the other hand, this was really good for us because uh, only the strongest ones survived and started asking the question of uh, what uh, can make us successful again and uh, what is our core. And uh, we found ourselves in a pretty nice uh, niche helping companies figure out how to make their remaining services or products better and longer lasting so that they are filled with meaning, not empty buzzwords. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. could start do that already in 2009 and 10. 
and uh, have continued to ever since. Yeah. And do you think your background in advertising has been a strength in doing service design? In what way has that been an advantage possibly? It's difficult for me to judge because uh, <laughs> I, I haven't seen any other backgrounds in our office. Uh, but uh, definitely it has been really helpful because uh, we understand how the market works, what the consumer's uh, needs are or how to find out what they are. It's just that previously we were applying this knowledge for a different purpose. And that purpose was to make nicer pictures and nicer copy. copy. But uh, now we are applying it to change the processes, change the organizations, change the services and change the products. Okay, great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the project uh, that you won the award for? Oh, this has been, uh, it's even difficult to describe it as a project because it's uh, a lifetime work uh, mm -hmm. here at Brand Manual because we started already in 2010. But the work uh, was uh, for Apollo, which at the time was a bookstore here in Estonia. And by today, it has transformed into a large uh, or largest entertainment brand, which uh, integrates uh, book, a bookstore, a multimedia. It uh, sells also devices, music, films. It has a cinema theater chain. And it also has a restaurant chain uh, between the two. So it's a holistic entertainment experience uh, for uh, consumers. And that's uh, what we were awarded for. But basically, yeah, so we got an award for our client. They have been doing the heavy, <laughs> the heavy work. We were just consulting yeah. them at the right time. Okay. <laughs> And you basically helped them with uh, changing their whole uh, business model. Uh, yes, in the beginning, it was really hard for them or anybody else to imagine that Apollo could be something other than a bookstore. The question they approached us with uh, was, uh, how could we sell more books? But basically, it was never about selling more books. It was about serving uh, more people and understanding what people need and what they would like to buy and pay for. And how did you manage to like uh, change the way you were dealing with the project for them from uh, selling more books to what you were actually uh, doing and what you actually helped them with? Well, this was where we discovered ourselves in the beginning of our careers that uh, nobody was uh, able to understand what we are talking about because it seemed so complicated, so far away. And uh, the idea of service design was uh, very new to everybody. It, it still is. So we actually put together a course, a branding and service design ABC, which was targeted towards our new clients and uh, their teams. It was a full day course. So basically we gathered all the dif different uh, important people from the company in one room and uh, gave them our knowledge, gave them the background, engaged them in a few group exercises. And based on that, we onboarded them and they got an understanding of how service design and understanding their core uh, can help them and their business. So basically, we trained our clients mm -hmm. before we could start working for them. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I presume uh, if you've been working on that, well, you didn't call it a project uh, for so long, um, It must have started with a with a smaller project, I expect. Could you could you tell us a little bit about what it was like really at the start, the question they had, and what you ended up in the very first phase? Uh, the first uh, encounter with Apollo was actually pretty funny because one of their uh, staff members approached us because she knew that we were also doing some graphic design. So she asked us uh, to design a business card. A business card <laughs> that would fit seven different logos of the of the different brands uh, the holding company was representing. So we gladly took the job under one condition, and the condition was that we would be presenting uh, the layout of the business card to the board members of the seven companies or the seven brands. 
And since uh, one week later, there was this meeting already arranged. Uh, we got uh, our time slot to that meeting and we presented the business cards. And everybody was pretty happy with the design until we popped the question of why you have seven brands for uh, similar and competing content. Why not put it together under one or optimize the experience for the customer? Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, I think there was a month or two of silence until they digested the idea. Then we followed on with a training program. And after that, uh, the first actual project or work was uh, with opening a new concept for the bookstore, which already integrated music and, and uh, movies, films, DVDs. Uh, so we started moving along with uh, small steps. And these uh, these seven brands were they all bookstores or were they uh, or did they also have different services? They had different services. One of them was uh, selling movies. The other one was uh, renting movies. Third one uh, was uh, Apollo, which was a bookstore. Uh, and then was a kiosk chain selling newspapers and lottery tickets and cigarettes. There was a wholesale company for uh, newspapers and so on. So it was all media and content uh, and ent entertainment related. But everybody was working separately. And nobody even knew that they were connected. So there were actual seven uh, companies uh, working next to each other with different uh, employees. Do I understand that right? Uh, yes, there might have been some overlap in employees, but uh, what the customers uh, and the consumers on the market were seeing was seven different shops and seven different brands and seven different experiences, not interlinking with each other. So this is what, like where we saw our, our opportunity to approach them. Yeah. Was it like that behind the scenes as well? Uh, in, in, inside the company, were there also seven different brands or was it a, a single unified company on the inside? Inside, Apollo has always been really strong. And uh, even today, they have and operate uh, uh, different uh, companies, but they are situated together and they have a really strong uh, office and really strong back office. Uh, and uh, this has always been their core strength and uh, is is today so uh, on the inside they have been doing things together from the very beginning so this i guess is one of the key success factors which has made them uh, greatly successful on the market it seems like this is really a huge uh, project with a lot of stakeholders involved um how do you see your role as a service designer in in this project what was your specific role compared to the other people in the in the company? Uh, I was one of the key account managers from Brand Manual side, uh, running this project throughout all these years. Uh, and uh, I see myself more as a consultant for the client and uh, as a project manager, because the types of activities we have been involved in over the years there have been tens, if not hundreds, uh, mini projects. And uh, none of these projects has ever been defined as uh, a service design project because the client has never asked us to design a service or to redesign their business model. It has been happening uh, along the, the way as we are going, uh, fixing one problem after another. So constant iteration is uh, the part uh, which we could call service designing. Apollo's concept. What are the, the important key members of, uh, of, of your team uh, at Brand Manual working on a project like this? Which, which kind of members do you have mm -hmm. always? Well, we always have one person who is the project lead, who uh, she or he is uh, the person responsible for exchanging information between the client on one hand and exchanging information uh, in the team uh, on the other hand. And the team usually consists of the project lead, uh, one or two uh, strategic uh, or uh, uh, service design uh, specialists, uh, a research person. Uh, we have one research assistant working uh, at Brand Manual, uh, an art director, 
and uh, then designers, be it a graphic designer or web designer. We have uh, different uh, people, but uh, we pull them together in the team based on the scope of the project. But there's always the project lead and the strategic lead, and everybody else is pulled in uh, according to the need. And what were the uh, people from Apollo you mainly worked with? What were their roles in the organization? Well, this is where uh, being uh, part of a small country like Estonia gives really good advantage because it's fairly easy to get uh, to the top management. So we have been working with Apollo's top management uh, from day one with uh, the heads and own owners of the company and uh, they are still uh, involved in most of the projects and uh, are really hands-on. So this has spared a lot of time. There have been uh, many different people, but uh, they have all been made decision makers. So decisions have been made fairly fast. At mm -hmm. some point, uh, Apollo uh, was owned by a Finnish holding company. And I remember them uh, making jokes about uh, Finns ba being a little scared of how fast things are going in Estonia. Because it usually <laughs> takes a lot, lot uh, longer to make a decision in Finland or in Sweden. Um, also, something uh, I want to ask about is uh, yeah, redesigning complete stores and well, multiple stores uh, how do you go about prototyping something like that okay have you gone through prototypes or was everything just designed on paper and implemented right away uh, this is Which where we cool. had really really good cooperation uh, with uh, interior designers or interior architects i'd call them who had a really clear vision of uh, what they want to achieve and the client also had a good vision of what they want to achieve. Uh, physical prototyping, uh, we never did. The first physical prototype was actually the pilot store, which was opened in 2010 or 11, I think. So uh, that's, again, being a small country and an agile country, we just build stuff And then we see if it works. If it doesn't, we try to fix it. Yeah. And did you then involve customers um, throughout the process before the pilot store in any way? Or? Uh, at this moment, we uh, involved customers in figuring out what their needs are. We never asked what you want to be in the store, but uh, we were asking uh, people to understand how they consume entertainment where they purchase it, how they purchase it, for whom they purchase it. And uh, that was an easy decision to make, uh, to skip a few of the seven brands and consolidate them under Apollo, especially since uh, the digital uh, era was uh, making, uh, for example, video rentals uh, obsolete. So people were no longer renting VHS tapes because they could buy or look at uh, movies online. So we took these behavioral patterns and uh, put them into a new business model with, together with Apollo. But we never were able to test it because you had to build it first. Yeah, and I can imagine when you have the pilot store, of course, you can test quite a lot <laughs> where there are some uh, uh, methods you use to uh, evaluate how it was going in the pilot store and what would be the next uh, step this has been of course uh, already seven years uh, but uh, for the uh, awards uh, we sat down with uh, the managing director of Apollo and uh, pulled up some old numbers and statistics to see uh, how things have changed over time. And the uh, impact has been colossal compared uh, to what it was in, in uh, 2009 and 10 of how people are uh, buying and what they are buying and how they are consuming entertainment. So we have a lot of numbers, a lot of data, and our client has been doing a really good uh, job at uh, planning uh, how to manipulate or how to motivate the consumers to make uh, other choices. 
As a, in, in many service design projects, it can be very difficult to to very clearly say this is the change that we have brought about. This is the improvement. Uh, in 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 your case, I can imagine it's it's a bit more concrete if you look at at sales figures and that sort of things. Uh, how how does the company? How does Apollo define the success of of this whole trajectory? Well, for, for, for Apollo as a retail organization, of course, uh, sales numbers are number one. And uh, a few years later, right now, uh, for them, uh, customer loyalty has become number one. So how do you retain your uh, customer base and how do you make them return more often? How do you make them increase the amount of purchases they make during uh, one session and so on? So the metrics have always been there, but they have changed over time. And how, how do you measure customer loyalty, for instance? Uh, with Apollo, it's, uh, we launched uh, the new uh, loyalty program. I think it was a year ago. And the whole target of the loyalty program was to bring uh, three different parts uh, together for uh, the customers and the three parts were being the physical store the cinemas and uh, the juice bars so for them uh, we created or helped help to create a loyalty program that would give benefits from using all three so this this is how we start uh, this is how we've done it mm -hmm. okay so service design uh, network decided that uh, you guys uh, should get an award. Why do you think uh, they selected uh, your project? <laughs> what do you think is the reason? I think uh, one of the reasons might have been uh, the great uh, change that Apollo has created on the market in the behavior of uh, customers and uh, a positive change. This has been measured in numbers, and uh, it was really easy easy to prove, and uh, it has been beneficial both for Apollo as well as for the consumers. So this is mm -hmm. uh, probably the number one reason, because it was easy to prove. Mm -hmm. yeah, you could really uh, show the impact uh, you made for Apollo and for our customers. Yes, and second, I think uh, the biggest win for Apollo was not to get stuck in an old business model, but uh, find inspiration to innovate and uh, redesign their own business and uh, do it pretty successfully. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is the value of winning this award for you and for Apollo? Well, we were really surprised, flattered, honored. We were really, really, really happy to get it. And uh, this has brought uh, along uh, a lot of good and positive publicity. And uh, we have even agreed with Apollo that uh, they get to display the award uh, at their uh, flagship store. <laughs> because they really feel proud about uh, getting it. And uh, we've even uh, discussed about uh, how we can celebrate about it together. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice that you think about it as a, as a team, uh, Apollo and Brand Manual together. I think the best service design projects feel as if it's one team working on it and not just a client and an agency. Yes, that's true, because over the past years, we have grown uh, really close. And I must say that the relationship between Brand Manual and Apollo has been uh, like, um, let's say, with sports athletes, where you have uh, the coach, that would be us. And then you have the athlete that's doing all the, all the hard work and the sweating and the running and the training and the failing and the trying again part. So they have done a lot of work and have invested a lot of their time and resources into actually making the success happen. If Apollo yeah. didn't do that, we would never have gotten the award. So thank you, Apollo. 
<laughs> and would you see also uh, people from your team as the uh, players in this game, or do you only see yourself as a coach? Or how how could we? No, see whenever that metaphor <laughs> in practice. <laughs> of course, when I'm referring to the coach, it's not me; it's uh, our team, and uh, we uh, work in a team. And actually, everybody in the team gets to meet the clients with different time periods. Uh, different uh, people take the the leading role in the in the project, depending on the scope of the project. So it might be the strategic uh, person in the team uh, who's uh, in direct contact with the client, or the art director, or the project lead, or even one of the designers who's di directly in com contact uh, with the client. So it's definitely everybody's effort. Yeah. Everybody working closely together with Apollo. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. And it's always nice to have uh, a client whom it's easy to connect with as a consumer. So it's uh, fairly difficult to work with a nuclear physics company because <laughs> if you're an, not a nuclear physicist, then it might take some time to understand. But uh, as a consumer of entertainment, of movies, of music, of books and of good food, it's fun. It's so much easier. Yeah. If you look back at the whole process you went through with Apollo, is there something you would have done differently? Of course. We would probably have done everything differently. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, you learn as you go along, and you make mistakes, and uh, you never get a chance to do them again. So if somebody asks me, Can you, would you do it again? Of course, I would change everything to make it better, make it faster, more efficient. Uh, but uh, learning, uh, failing is important, so you learn. And we've failed a lot and we've learned even more. Can you give us an example of something <laughs> that you thought you failed, but that you learned and then you changed uh, <laughs> Yes, well, what's for your the better? biggest failure? <laughs> Uh, well, for example, one of the iterations uh, we we, we uh, went through with Apollo that never happened uh, was the idea of a, a top uh, store of uh, having a top 10 or top 20 uh, book displays in uh, different kiosks, uh, so shopping shop solution, and uh, we spent three or four months. Uh, actually trying to figure out the business model for it because it made a lot of sense and Apollo had all the advantage and all the access to information and, uh, and, the, and the stock and the books. But uh, it never happened because uh, at the end of the day, it was too complicated to manage because uh, the top 10 and top 20 lists of books change every week. And if you have a hundred different locations and you need to change them uh, and uh, handle the book logistics of uh, all these locations, it became a nightmare. So we skipped it. Do you think that would be something you would have known in advance or only by uh, going through the process discovering it? Well, of course, if we knew where the bottleneck of the idea was, we would have found it uh, faster. But I'm really glad Apollo had uh, such great people in their own team who were able to calculate these things through before we built the concept. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a, a really expensive mistake in that case. But we figured out uh, we shouldn't do it much earlier, which was a win yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what's next for Apollo? Are you still continuing to work for them? Apollo has grown to be fairly independent. Uh, we work in cycles. Uh, sometimes we never hear from them for six months. And then uh, they get an idea and we help them to realize the idea and make it uh, happen. So what they are uh, planning now is to widen uh, their cinema chain, which they are doing fairly success successfully. And they are also uh, widening their reach beyond Estonia's borders. So first uh, cinema is being built in uh, Riga, our uh, neighbor, neighbor country, Latvia. 
So that's uh, how they're doing. And have they brought any design expertise in-house or do they still exclusively work with uh, an agency such as you? Uh, at any given moment, they have been working with different agencies. Uh, so uh, design agency, um, marketing or advertising agency, and then us as a consultancy, we have been working uh, together all the time. So they have always had other partners than us. And this has made uh, our work much easier. And also in-house that they... Uh, actually, I don't know that they have in-house uh, service designers or graphic designers or uh, any other designers. But uh, what I must compliment them upon is uh, being able to apply the basic principles of service design in-house. So yes, they understand... Uh, how they should uh, track the customers, uh, how they should map their needs and their journey, and how they should design better experiences, not uh, just uh, sell products at a better price. This mm -hmm. is what they are doing very well. Okay. Um, so apart from uh, the project for Apollo, what kind of other projects do you work on in, as a service in service design? Uh, last year was good for us. We got some uh, more awards for service design projects. And one of them was for local uh, forestry union, for example. And uh, we were awarded because we brought together, uh, because it influenced so many different stakeholders. So uh, it was basically a, an org organization uh, created for uh, private forest owners uh, to make them more aware of how to take care of their forest and how to interact with the different uh, stakeholders in the process. It also involved the state managed organizations and it also involved commercial organizations who buy forest and uh, timber so mm -hmm. uh, we got an award uh, which awarded us for uh, handling the project uh, bringing together more stakeholders than were actually necessary and uh, mm -hmm. everybody who was involved uh, profited from the project what was the impact you made there uh, can you be more specific? What uh, impact are you looking yep. for? Yeah, for example, you say that at Apollo, uh, you could prove that the sales increased, that people became more loyal. Uh, were there some similar um, outcomes that you got from this project? Uh, like what was the, the good uh, effect that you uh, evoked? First, it was the awareness of... Uh, different private forest owners because now they were connected under one roof by this uh, forestry association and actually uh, the level of uh, uh, service quality provided by uh, different uh, local organizations all over the country in 15 different municipalities was uh, unified so there was one roof organization or structure or process developed uh, to deliver uh, the same uh, level of quality services uh, for different forest owners all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, what is the, the field of service design uh, like in Estonia? Are there, are there many companies at the moment that do service design? Actually, at this very moment, uh, we are the only company that has defined itself as a service design consultancy. There are, over the past years, a lot of advertising agencies who have included service design into the list of the services they provide. There are a few great uh, design agencies that apply design thinking and service design principles in their everyday work. So... Uh, the picture is, uh, I, I can't say that uh, there is a niche here on the market. Everybody is uh, applying more and more of service design principles, which makes me really happy. 
but mm -hmm. uh, there are no direct competitors uh, who focus solely on uh, service design, at least not here in Estonia. Yeah. And uh, the Estonian government, do, do they make use of service design to improve public services? Well, this is unfortunately uh, where things are not so good. Public sector in Estonia has not been a good client, mainly due to the public procurement process, which mm -hmm. basically defines the problem and also the solution, so you only have to provide the price. And service mm -hmm. design doesn't work like that. In service design, you first need to figure out what the actual problem is. And then during tight cooperation with the client, you figure out what the solution might be. So the state today is not uh, having public procurements uh, for its services, at least not too many. Mm -hmm. You said you also had an office in Sweden, if I understood right? Yes, yes we have is an office. Is there a difference uh, between Estonia and Sweden? Swedish market is uh, fairly more developed and uh, there are specialized service design companies there who also work a lot with public sector. And this is a great motivation for us that things can be done right also with the state. So applying the same principles uh, for a public sector uh, is something we would really love to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's an, an area where you really can make a difference for, for people if it's, uh, if it's done right, designing those services. Um, how would you say the, the, the quality of services uh, offered by, by the government is in Estonia? Do they need improvement or do they manage to do quite a good job without service design? Uh. Looking from my own point of view, I would say a lot of things need improving. But as soon as I hear people from outside Estonia using the services or experiencing uh, uh, them, uh, I understand that we are in a very good position because most of the information exchange and services in Estonia are handled online. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to send any papers. I can sign documents uh, digitally, which saves a lot of time, a lot of nerves, and uh, very many, many people are happy with that. So basically to fill in your tax declaration, it takes me 25 seconds. Wow, it's <laughs> a dream. <laughs> it is, and it's really hard to believe because uh, the state has integrated an IT system or different uh, organizations and, and uh, offices exchange information between themselves. And uh, as our former prime minister put it, if you have given information about yourself to the state once in any, in any place, then the state should never ask you the same information again. So I fully agree with that. <laughs> how many times do you need to fill in the same forms over and over and over again? Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. M many times. <laughs> Far too many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. Well, that's quite interesting to see that they're doing quite well then in, in that sense where they don't really uh, allow the process of uh, researching what they need and then finding a solution together. They don't really use that with design agencies, but still they manage to... Uh, yeah, design systems that really uh, work. Curious how that uh, works internally at their government. <laughs> well, this is probably because we have been uh, an independent economy for only a couple of decades and having to build everything from scratch. It was just like, uh, let's say, Germany after the World War. They had to build everything from scratch, which made them huge, hugely successful because they were having no legacy systems and they built new factories. So we also built new IT systems, new infrastructure, and we had a fairly young uh, government and uh, passing pretty radical and uh, strong reforms. So this gave us a quick start. Yeah. Now, the way it often works now here in uh, in 
Belgium is that there is a, a, a project which is to define the what the solution must be, and uh, and they often use service design for that. For instance, uh, like a, a web a website or a digital office, uh, and then there'll be a project just just to define what's really needed, uh, what the people who use it need. So uh, fortunately, we really appreciate service design here. <laughs> That's probably also because we really need it yes. <laughs> in our <Yeah>. government. <laughs> There's well, a lot of things that are not, uh, not digital yet. Yeah. Because uh, in that respect, Estonia is, is a good case study. And uh, we recently launched our e-residency service. So basically, you guys can easily apply for Estonian e-residency. You will get uh, an Estonian ID card which will allow you to get access to Estonia's public services, start a company here in Tallinn, open a bank account, even without showing up. So we have passed mm. the new laws to make these regulations uh, uh, reflect the actual life. So you don't need to move people around the world uh, physically to identify them anymore. Yeah, great. That sounds really good. I will keep in mind to <laughs> check out how uh, Estonia <laughs> government welcome. has solved things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I think... Uh, uh, it was really interesting to hear all the details about your uh, uh, project for uh, Apollo, uh, how it got started, where the challenges lay. Um, so I'd like to uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to share all this with us. Thank you, guys. It was a blast. And, uh, of course, I forgot all the important things I wanted to mention, but uh, <laughs> feel free to yeah, Google email me or anybody else uh, in our company and uh, you will get all the answers and if, whenever in Estonia definitely go visit Apollo yeah great <laughs> yeah, that's great if people want to find out more information about you or this project where can we send them online uh, thebrandmanual.com is our website you can also subscribe to our uh, news bulletin there where we publish different case studies tips and tricks on service design we are of course available also on facebook and uh, we have a twitter account so basically all the social media you can imagine just uh, <laughs> google and you'll find it brand manual all right okay. excellent great. have a great day and uh We'll catch you later. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. The Service Design Podcast was brought to you by the Service Design Network and Night Moves. For more information, previous episodes, or to join the conversation, please visit servicedesignpodcast.com. For more information about the Service Design Network, visit service-design-network.org. And for Night Moves, visit nightmoves.be. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to this podcast. The intro and outro music is from If the Stars Grow Dim Tonight by Hydrogen C featuring I Will I Swear. Until next time.